Happy Wednesday. Woman Crush Wednesday time. We have a really, really cool um, female guest. She is someone who really um, helped me in my journey through life, my career, so many awesome things. Her name is Jill Annenberg Lawrence. I'll let you guys jump on. Hi, you guys. Hi, Edwin. Hi, Andrew. Hi, guys. Hi, Juan. Hi, Harvey. Um, I'll let you guys kind of jump on. We have a really cool guest today. If you guys have ever, oh, thank you, Harvey. If you guys have ever experienced um, imposter syndrome, I want to talk about that today with a coach of mine. Jill Annenberg Lawrence. Hi, JB. Hi, Andrew. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for jumping on. I think today's going to be, hi, James. I'm well. Thank you for asking. I think today is going to be, hi, Connor. Um, I think today's going to be great because I, let's see. Oh, here we go. Jill's jumping on. Okay, great. I've uh, imposter syndrome and it's, you know, it's funny because I think it's a, a hi, Tim. I think it's a thing a lot of people don't know about. Or even understand that they're experiencing. Hi, Jill. As Hi. My favorite health coach jumps on. Jill Annenberg Lawrence is jumping on, talking. My favorite woman ever. I mean, oh. you haven't just been you haven't just been a coach for me, a health coach for me for for, for many years. You've been truly like family. You know, know. you've 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 helped me so much. Um, I always say you're like my little sister, and I feel so protective. So. If anyone ever comes after Aaron, you're coming after me too. Don't. Have you seen Jill's arms? Have you seen Jill's arms? <laughs> no, but I, I honestly, I, I appreciate that so much because I feel like, um, you know, you've been a friend of mine for many years. And then it was funny in 2020, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give the gift to myself. And it was, it was May 5th, I remember so specifically, because my birthday is May 8th, and you just came into my life. Like, I was like, your messaging was great, I love that you're in, into the world of holistic, um, you're so bubbly and infectious, oh, and it was you. just really easy to learn from you, and um, the last thing I was going to say that feels so um, beautiful for me is that you actually taught me how to be a better friend. That is such a great compliment because you and I have talked about this a lot. I've really worked on cultivating specifically my female friendships, I'd say, over the last five years. I had a traumatic event that spurred a lot of growth and positive upheaval in my life, I guess you could say. And um, being a better friend to myself first and then to others and who I really wanted to have in my circle. Um, so thank you for saying that because it's, it's definitely something I've worked on. And I love that you and I can share in being really great sisterly friends to each other. Yeah, and I love that our sessions were always consisting of, like, how can I level up myself? But then how can I structure my life where um, I have boundaries? And having somebody like you who, you know, it's so interesting because you're always someone that wants to learn. And you share your own stories. And let's get into it because, like, we can, just con it. we can just continue to hop around when it comes to life. But you're on because you are such a Woman Crush Wednesday for me. You've been an inspiration, like I said. And you are my health coach. Um, mm -hmm. I had this huge job with ABC, and I was terrified, which was part of why I was like, I'm going to give the gift to give myself and hire Jill to help work through just taking better care of myself. So first and foremost, my question to you is, as a health, as a health coach, you know, what was the inspiration behind like wanting to even get into that space for you? Yeah, well, I honestly, Erin, feel like I've been coaching my whole life. I'm very empathetic. Anyone who knows me, even for just a second, knows I feel very deeply. I'm very sensitive. Like, you cry, I cry. You laugh, I'll laugh. Uh, you know, any, any of those emotions, I feel like I pick up very deeply. So I want other people to feel good, to be happy. And even when there's shit going on, there's still blessings in the bullshit. Can we cuss? Because I already did. Yeah, we can. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. That's, that's how I talk. Um, but there's, I feel like there's always good stuff that comes out of traumatic events, hard things. And honestly, part of it was coaching myself. Like my parents got divorced when I was 10. It was not easy. It lasted years. I've had things that have happened throughout life that have not been easy. Multiple family members having cancer. My little sister, her daughter, I think it was like three or four years ago, out of the blue, traumatic, you know, cancer in her brain had to get like multiple surgeries. And there was a lot of stuff that happened. And I felt like, I would coach people in the hospital. I, like my dog had a gnarly surgery back in December, and as hard as it was for me, it was funny. I would sit there and 
start like coaching people next to me. And so I, I feel like we don't always have to be doing the job like hired. You and I are doing a session. We are giving our gifts all of the time. And I always say being of service, at least for me, I have found to be one of the greatest gifts in the world because even though you're being of service to others, you're really giving that gift back to yourself because it feels so good to help. And then that's how we uplift the damn world and get out of all the stuff that's going on. Yeah, yeah. You definitely did. You do such a good job at mirroring. And you're very, like, I love the word sensitive, too, because, like, sometimes that can be thrown at us as though it's, like, an insult. And I'm like, mm -hmm. actually, no, it's a superpower. Thank you very much. Like, you're a super empath, so you can absorb people's energy. And it's, like, crazy because when I've stayed at your house, like, your damn squirrels <laughs> come down and want a piece of you. And, uh, you know, you just, you have that aura, that energy that makes people feel really safe. Um, and so Thank is you. that how you found the path? Like you, because like what's interesting is when I met you, you know, you were like a comedian, you were a uh -huh. TV host, you know, you, and, and when I met you, you were just emblazoned with a lot of confidence. So how did you, because I think the question for a lot of us too, Jill, which is why I, I love working with you is figuring out what our purpose is. It's mm -hmm. figuring out like when we mirror empathy and we are in service, like that's when you feel like your highest self. So how did you find that path? Was it a struggle? Because you have navigated different things in mm -hmm. your life in terms of being a comedian, in terms of, you know, being a host on TV shows. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So, I mean, it's been a path. So I like I've ever since I was a kid, I loved making people laugh, being silly. Uh, I finally have harnessed, like, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. A lot of us say, I'm sorry when we cry. Fuck that. If you're going to cry, feel your emotions. You should apologize when you're stifling them down. And then you, I, I call it like the Trader Joe's effect. Like, you're in line. Someone bumps you. And all of a sudden, you, like, have this outburst at Trader Joe's because you didn't deal with a couple of things that now built up. So, um, yeah, and now I, I can laugh and, and make jokes, and, and oftentimes it's like the too soon jokes, which are my favorite. My brother and I always laugh about that stuff. It's like, is this too soon? No, like, I feel like there's got to be levity and there has to be lightness. But to answer your question, I remember specifically being in the kitchen with my father because, I mean, he financially helped me, like, taking acting classes, improv classes. He'd come to all my stand-up shows, which, oh, my God, you guys, I have the dirtiest sense of humor, and it's funny because now, like, you know, in the space I'm in, and I work with like corporate offices and with brands, so I have to dial it back and be more silly. Um, but my dad like supported all of that, and I remember crying. And this was in 2015 because I was finishing up nutrition school, and I was kind of like getting out of like comedy and hosting. And I said, I feel like a failure. I feel like I, I took all these classes, and you helped me, and you supported me. And what do I have to show for? And he was like, Are you kidding me? He's like, You performed on all these huge stages, and you hosted all these different shows. He's like, Everything that you've learned will then move into the next thing that you do. And, and if you decide to get out of nutrition and do something else, like this will all be part of who you are, the tools that you have, and it has. Like I'm so grateful that I have my writing experience. My degree is in broadcast journalism. I never wanted to do news. I don't care. I mean, it's all negative. Like I care what's going on, but I, I don't watch it so much as I would rather watch like a comedy video or like the cute fluff animal stuff because I think it's also really important what goes into our minds because what goes into our minds is what goes into our, our bodies out of our mouths how we feel who we attract right. like all of that stuff is so intertwined that's why i say holistically i'm a holistic health coach it's everything I, I, and i joke you know it's for me like when i'm coaching it's putting the best things in your mind your body and in your world you want to get the crap out crap out of your mind crap out of your body crap out of your mouth the things that come into your body should be clean but come out of your mouth can be dirty <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, and that was the other thing, too, that was so attractive about you was you're kind of like, a, you know, you have all these different ver variations of, of being able to provide holistically clean. I trust you so much because it's something Thank that's you. so passionate about you that I'm like, is this product going to, like, give me cancer and you know everything about it typically? Or, or at least you'll have the support to investigate and go, you know what, here's this alternative. And I've used so many products that I like that uh, – you know, um, are a cleaner alternative. But it's so interesting because I love what your dad helped you do. And this is why, and you and you have such a great relationship with your dad and you just went on vacation to celebrate your dad. And like the trip pictures were like remarkable. But what you were experiencing, which is what I want to get into next, which is why you're so uh, special to me because you offer a lot of support with the nutrition component but you helped me in, a, in a, a mental space, too, which I really wasn't even thinking I was going to necessarily get. Like, I thought I was going to get, like, nutrition and lifestyle. 
but but mental is so part of that component and I wanted to deep dive a little bit because part yeah. of your sessions that I appreciate with you is you do offer bits and pieces of like the things that you struggle with and I actually love hearing when people I look up to go I'm struggling too which is why sometimes mm -hmm. I become more confident in going it's okay to not be okay because I think about when I needed that support and maybe if like my niece is watching or like younger girls are watching if I tell them I've been bullied um, maybe then they'll feel like it's okay if they, mm -hmm. they're they going through that stuff. So yeah. for me, the thing that I really noticed I needed to work on was imposter syndrome. Yeah. And we've talked about this a lot, and I really wanted to take some time to focus on it because you were kind of suggesting that you had done all of these things, and yet you were still feeling like you hadn't achieved. And your dad's like, you, you do the scariest thing. You get on a stage and you try to make people laugh. That's terrifying. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yes. Yeah. So a little bit about, um, and for me, I, I, I booked a big show and I'm like, okay, now what? Like, this is so terrifying. So why do we have imposter syndrome? What is imposter syndrome? Mm -hmm. Do you struggle with it too sometimes? And how have you best <laughs> navigated it? Yeah. So imposter syndrome, it's doubting your abilities, feeling like a fraud that mm -hmm. instead of addressing and, and acknowledging rather, all that it took to get there, you think, oh, it's dumb luck. Like, I just happened to get lucky um, that you don't deserve to be there. When you do deserve to be there, Erin, you're an incredible host. You're an incredible person. Uh, and I know it's not just reading a script. Like, you're giving suggestions. You're altering the script. Like, you're giving so much more because of this whole background that you have. Like, you're an educated, super smart, empowered woman. So you got this job because of who you are. And a lot of times like we doubt our abilities and we think that oh I'm, I'm lucky someone's gonna figure out that I shouldn't be here or someone's gonna figure out that I'm not as good of a coach as I think I am or I don't have enough experience and it's natural and the thing that we all have to know is everyone does it everyone doubts themselves and there's been some huge celebrities that have said oh my gosh I feel like they're gonna figure out like I shouldn't have won this award it's like hell yeah you should have won the award I should get the clients and work with the people that I do because I've put the time and effort in and not saying that if you've just all of a sudden like gotten your certification, but you've been studying your whole life, like, again, you can also start working with top people. I think a lot of us just doubt ourselves because a number of things, what we see on TV, which is complete bullshit with reality TV. It's not real. It's scripted. Um, social media. You know, I always joke that comparison is the cock block to joy, but gratitude is the yellow brick road to happiness. When we're grateful and we look at, I mean, it's yeah. true, but when we look at all the things that we have accomplished in life, what are all our successes? What are we proud of? And it's not just like the things that you can write down on the list, but what you feel about yourself. Like, so I'm going to go back to my squirrels. I have these squirrels in the front yard that I have gained their trust. I have, um, I have my own horse and another horse at the stable that, we go to, you've met him, Mr. Gonzalez and our horse, Whiskey. Gonzalez was afraid. He was, uh, and oftentimes when we're afraid, what did we do? We lash out, we're mean, we want to like bite people. That's how he was. I had to gain his trust. The, like those things for me, like working with animals, that's another huge thing. Like I'm obsessed with animals, you guys. I have like a paw print on my necklace. I've got my cat walking around drinking my water right now. I have two rescue dogs out there. I, like I, I love animals. And I think one of the reasons why is because you can't pay money to make an animal trust you. I can't get a certification to make an animal trust me. Like you oh, have to invest the time and you have to have consistency of behavior. And those things that are incomparable, that you can't put down, it's, it's who you are, who you are in your soul, what you offer to the world. That's what's important. Like that's what matters. You know, a lot of times we think it's, it's a resume and it's how did you make people feel? What's the energy that you brought to the room when you left hanging out with someone? Did you leave them feeling like, Oh my God, I feel empowered. I feel excited. I feel so good about myself. Yeah. Or they drag you down with their own bullshit. So I think a lot of it is just who you are and what you contribute is how you kind of offset that imposter syndrome. Yeah. And I love that. It's, what you contribute is not necessarily your resume and how much money you have and the car you drive. It's exactly like what you said. It's almost kind of like, and that was what you, and that was what you had me do. And I was like, Oh my God. I mean, first of all, of course, yes, I went, I went the accomplishment route because in my mind I was like, well, that makes me special. 
But then you and I worked on it's a layer deeper than that. It's the fact that you can have animals trust you uh, because it's just it's your it's your spirit. It's it's what you prioritize. It's it's like you said, and I love that. That makes such a great point. Hi, Nala. Um, it, it makes such a great point that you can't buy an animal's trust. You just kind of have to be there and be in that space and um that's why i think you're also such a great coach because you. um you teach people how to show up better in the world and then there's your accomplishment like you can't write that you you can't get a certification for how you make people feel right maya angelou i love the quote it's not what you say or what you do it's how you make people feel and so that's an accomplishment for me that makes me feel really good when people leave my presence and they go ah she made me feel safe or, um, she saw me, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's, what's also too awesome about you is like, we work on our, like, even like understanding our love language, which for you, yeah. you love words of affirmation. And I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'm that way too. Like I think, so anyways, you shine a big old light on, um, our strengths rather than focus on sometimes the thing we do with social media we can go down that rabbit hole of comparison and i'm right there with you like i yeah. sometimes i'm like what am i doing I, I have to set a timer because it's really unhealthy to yeah. get like down that time stuck and then what did you do you just like learned the life of somebody else who's living their life like what are you doing you know so yeah. um i did want to touch on you know, what the process is for you as a coach. Like, and I think maybe for everybody, it might be different. I know for me, um, I, I was pretty intense on what it is I wanted to work on. Like I knew I had a deadline. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, get me tip top shape mentally, physically, but for you, you have so many different offerings. What is the process as a coach that goes in your mind when you, when you meet somebody and you have a client? Yeah, well, um, first and foremost, I just do like a quick 20 minute chat with someone if they're interested. So if anyone is interested right now, whether it's mind, body, soul, nutrition, you're dealing with an illness, you want to increase your confidence, um, get toxic products out of your house, any of that stuff, like I work on all of it. So we just chat in the beginning. I see if we are a fit because I'm, I'm obviously not for everybody and everybody's not for me either. That's the other thing too, is we always think like, oh, I hope I don't offend someone or I hope that they like me. Well, of course, like I want people to like me, but if not, that's okay. There's plenty of people that that do like me, that get me, that don't mind if I say the F word or shit or bitch or anything. <laughs> I mean, I could, that, that list could go very long here. Um, but anyways, I do a three month transformation program and I call it that because you will transform on the other end of it. Just even like two, three sessions in, I've had clients say, oh my gosh, I had no idea we would be going this deep, that you would be sharing what you're sharing, that I would see all of these things shift and change because a lot of it comes down to self-love. Like when you love yourself and you actually take the time to go all those layers deeper. Like, why is this important? Like, sure, everybody wants to drop a couple of pounds, but that's not really it. There's always so many other things. Or we want to start our fitness habit back up. Okay, but it's not really just because you want to feel fit. It's because you want to, for me, I want to be able to ride my horses. I want to be able to pick up the dogs. I had to carry my dog down the hill when he tore his ACL. I was able to do it. Just and you have a big dog. <laughs> I got a big old, like, 45-pound pit bull, 55 pounds. Um, but anyways, it's a transformation. And I think the most important thing is I want you to leave not needing me anymore. I want to teach you the tools. I want to, what do they say? Um, teach, uh, give someone a fish and then whatever the thing is, give a fish, give them the wire to buy your own, get whatever. I want you to be able to catch your own fish. I don't want to have to be the one like, here's your bait. Here's this. I teach you how to live a better life, how to think better, how to choose better friends, your surroundings. Like that's the other thing too is who are we spending time with? What are we listening to? What are the podcasts that we're listening to? What are the TV shows that we're watching? What are the products that we clean our houses with? What kind of lube do you use? Is it toxic stuff that you're putting on your body? Hell no. Like, we want everything to be clean, organic, non-toxic, setting boundaries. Like all of that I think is so important. So a lot of that goes into the coaching. So depending on who I'm working with and what your goals are, it kind of shifts and changes throughout the program. But I have all of these different handouts, topics that I coach on, but I put it together different because we're all different and everybody needs different things. So it's very individualized. It's very um, uh, intimate because we get to know each other very well. And I oftentimes become pretty good friends with my clients. And I have some other coach friends that are like, oh, I share nothing. And I'm like, oh my God, we share everything. Like I, I become very good good friends and very close. And I love that because I want to know people very well because the more comfortable that you are sharing stuff, the quicker and the faster, that's the same thing, but the quicker and the deeper you get 
into your healing and onto the other side of living your best life. Yeah. Yeah, and, and honestly, like for people at home, what was so transformational for me was I think a lot of us are on autopilot. We don't know our mm -hmm. bad habits until we just kind of go like, this is the, like, it's like, here's what my day is. And here's what I'd like my day to look like. We don't even know what we're doing on a hamster wheel is even unhealthy until we bring it to an expert or somebody that can provide context. Because you're, you're, you're maybe they love that they watch TV. And by the way, nothing. I, first of all, love my reality TV. But Same here. Selling sunset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes we need it. We needed the escape right now with the with the, everything that's going on in the world, and so. But I think the best gift you gave me was watch your reality TV, but do it intentionally so that you don't have all of these. Because then what happens is then I, then I shame myself because I'm like, I should be doing this and I see this person doing this. And so we can become our own worst enemy and our own worst critic. And I know I need to let you go. However, the last question I wanted to ask you, because you were the gift to me in terms of really oh. prioritizing self-care. How does Jill prioritize self-care like is it a bubble bath is it you know like what is it for you <laughs> no I'm like screw a bubble bath um well if you just flip the word self-care it's how do you care for yourself so yeah. I think for me the first thing is setting boundaries because a lot of times we think oh self-care it has to be a bubble bath or a massage or like all of these long things and it's just little small stuff throughout the day. Like if I set a boundary and I know that I'm protecting my time, my energy, my space, my emotions, oh my God, I feel like I've got like this, this safety net around me so that I don't have shit that's going to trigger me and then make me eat something unhealthy. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I'll eat cake and I'll feel good about it. I don't want to eat cake because I'm pissed at somebody or pissed at a situation. Um, I spend a lot of time obviously with my animals, but like little snippets, like throughout the day. Oh my God, I'll just go and cuddle my dog Simon because he's my battery charger for like two minutes and that resets me. I have uh, two rescued rats that Aaron knows very well, Miriam and Susie, and sometimes I'll lay on the bed and they'll like run around me and lick my face and it'll just be a couple minutes before dinner. I'll just lay, uh, catch my breath. That is self-care to me. Like just little things, um, laughing with girlfriends, eating something delicious, prepping things the night before. If I know I have a busy day, again, how am I caring for myself? I'm going to make my smoothie. I'm going to lay my clothes out so then I can get in my workout, hop into those clothes that are laid out. Just easy little things. I feel like everyone makes it so big. It's just easy stuff that makes you feel good. So what makes you feel good? Do more of that and do less of the stuff that makes you feel bad. You're a dang inspiration, my girl, and I love you so much. And thank you. Thank you for helping us see our better potential so we can show up better for ourselves and better for our friends and better for our relationships. So, Oh my gosh. Um, I love you. I love you too. And I will be your confidence fluffer any day. And I also just wanted to acknowledge you, Erin, like you have such a big platform and you have such a big following and what you are doing with it is incredible and how vulnerable and how honest you are and that you've been just with everything that's happened over the last year, you are helping so many people by you being your best self and, and such a true, honest person. Like what you guys see from Erin is just as beautiful and honest and real as she is, oh. you know, like off camera. Like you really are like, you're such a great person. And I'm so glad that you get this life to live and to share with everybody else. Cause you're really making a huge impact. And I love you so much. Thank you. Your, your, your words mean so much to me because I feel like you really see me and I see you and I'm going to post information. Jill, my favorite health coach ever. You've just been such a godsend and a gift and I appreciate you. Have an amazing Wednesday and give all the fur babies a big kiss from Auntie. Okay? I will. I will. And thank you to everyone who's on here right now and just giving all of you a big hug and a slap on the ass. <laughs> I love it. All right. I love you, sis. I'll talk to you soon. I love you, okay? too. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Jill. Bye, Jilly.